Specious Rainbow writes, Dear Zay, I think that a video on identity and names is greatly needed. That would be such an interesting topic to discuss, as a name in itself is not such an important thing, but what comes from having a name and is catch my drift. No, I don't think I did catch your drift, and I don't think it's your fault. I think it's our fault. I couldn't find it in the words you wrote. Where is it? Catching a drift is an old phrase. Shakespeare used it in Hamlet. Mary, sir, here is my drift, and it comes from drive, to drive at. But I think you meant it in the modern sense, namely used to say that you've left out information or opinion from what you've just said, but you expect the person listening to still understand it. You left out information? On purpose? And you still expect me to understand it? How? In the book User Illusion, Tor Noratronders coined the term exformation, which means explicitly discarded information. That's the information that you threw away on purpose in the process of crafting that comment. Maybe you threw away more specific thoughts about your idea or an anecdote about why it's important to you or a feeling that you have when you think about it. All of that is the exformation of your message. The information of your message is tiny. Those little letters that you chose to put on the screen. That was only about 221 bytes of information or 1,768 bits of information. But you still expected me to get it, didn't you? You expected your point to come across. But across what? Across that chasm between us where those 221 bytes became numbers and voltage and floated meaninglessly until they arrived on my screen and I saw those words with my eyes. You expected me to fill in what you'd intentionally left out, didn't you? You expected me to look at those little letters and add meaning and add feeling and build up something similar to all that exformation that you left behind. That's how you wanted me to get that drift. We do this all the time, throw away a bunch of information and send just enough with the hopes that it gets unpacked properly on the other end with as little breakage as possible. Telephones do this. The audio is degraded on purpose to save bandwidth, just to the level where our brains can still piece together what the words are. Just enough. That's why when you read out a confirmation number for a flight, they can never discern the F from the S's, and you say S as in Sam. That information discerning an S from an F was thrown away on purpose. In his book, Noratronders gives a classic example of exformation in action. Victor Hugo wanted to know how his book Les Miserables was doing, so he wrote his publisher. All he included in his letter letter was a single character, a question mark, and his publisher wrote back with a single character, an exclamation point. So little information, so much exformation, so much depth. Of course they were able to unpack that information appropriately because they shared so much experience together, so much context, so that they could get each other's drifts right away. Nora Tronders wrote his book in 1991, and I don't think he could have imagined where we are now. The Hugo example almost seems silly in the age of text messages and Twitter. Our daily lives are littered with hundreds of those kinds of messages. You good? And the reply, frowny face. And we sense it. We sense all that meaning that's been thrown away. We stare at a text reading OK, trying to unpack the lost meaning of the lowercase o and the period at the end. We wrap those bumps with desperate feelings, imagining the intention behind each mark. Ah versus ah versus o oh versus oo versus hm versus hm versus ger, ha, 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 whatever, whatevs, m, k, m, k, and call me, period. That strikes fear into almost anyone's heart. And then of course there's the silent treatment where the total lack of information drips with exformation, intention, and meaning. Ugh. This is the modern art, communicating without communicating, and we do it intentionally, don't we? We know that being vague has power because we know that it gets unpacked on the other end by people's hopes and wishes and dreams. We closely crop our profile pictures, letting other people fill in the rest with their own desires. We send an X or a wink and we lie and wait for a response. What did it mean? You tell me. Okay, period. It means what you think it means, smiley face. We've learned to communicate like astrologers write horoscopes, trying to find words or pictures that resonate in the minds of people we haven't met, to build myths about ourselves. It's the gift of the modern age, the gift and curse of the virtual life. I've left so much information out of this. I hope you can unpack it. X. Zay. The runners-up in Bill Wadman's Upside Down Photo Challenge are Leviathan Stream 1. He says, quote, the fact that they're upside down is so matter of fact. Two, Marrero. Quote, one of the commenters got it right. It looks like she's hanging down from a grassy ceiling. And she's adorable to boot. And the winner is Jeff Owler. The woman sewed Ritz crackers to a paper plate. What else needs to be said? Ingenious. And now for the next Bill Wadman photo challenge. Great work on the upside down pics. For this week, take a picture of somebody screaming their head off. Like this. And now the amazing animator Lee Hall will animate one of your dreams. Happy freaking Friday. I keep dreaming that I'm killing my goldfish by overfeeding them. I try and pull just one flake out of the box to give them, but the one flake seems to turn into a whole handful, which gets cast into the water, and before I can spoon it out, they've eaten themselves to death. And I know it's happened before. It keeps happening, and I seem powerless to stop it. And each time I do it, the fish keep looking up at me as they're eating, saying, Why are you doing this to us? Why are you giving us all this food? Just before they die. Bye-bye, it's a bye-bye song.